Ma showcased her newly acquired feminine curves as her waist swayed like a pendulum, casting a spell on every man that passes by. All the men opened their mouths in shock as their jaw dropped. Some forgot to breathe while some stood like a tree while they watched her waist. One spilled his offer or her on his body while he watched Ma's waist swaying like a pendulum as she walked along the street of Omunede. How did Ma acquire these new feminine curves? Sit back and enjoy this lesson field and hilarious tale of Ikedi, the most honest man in the village, and his cunning wife, Ma, and their mischievous and hilarious twin, Udo Anoka. In the ancient kingdom of Umunede, wealth was the true measure of a man, and for poor Ikedi, it seemed that God had not deemed him fit for any blessings whatsoever. Living in a small mud hut with his wife, Uma, and their twin, Udo and Oka, they were the laughing stock for the whole village. Why the men of Umunede hunted expensive game and cheated in trade for cool cash? Ikedi, who was a simple subsistence farmer, did neither of that. He was a honest man and he did not cheat, but not out of integrity, but also because the thought of taking risks or dealing with stress was something he was not cut out for. Mma, on the other hand, never hesitated to lambast her husband for their miserable state of living. She often grumbled, if only I had coughs like my sister Chamaka, I would have married a rich man instead of you and your lizard belly. Their son, Udo Anoka, we are no better. At just 10 years old, they were already laid to terror, stealing and making noise all over the village. Even they made fun of their parents' poverty. Papa, why are we so poor? They would tease Ike, their father, who could only sigh in response, knowing that in a village full of cunning traders and daring hunters, he was the odd one among them. One fateful day, as a kid was wandering through the village, he stumbled upon an old blind man sitting by the roadside holding a handful of coin, some gold, some silver. The old man cried out for help, asking for someone to separate the coin for him. The villagers, being the sharp and dubious lot they were, took advantage of the man, pocketing the gold and silver and leaving him with worthless copper. But when the blind man called out to Ikede as he passes by, something strange happened. Without thinking twice, Ikede dutifully separated the coin, handing the gold and the silver back to the man before turning to leave. Wait, the old man called out. And as he had turned around, he was shocked to see that the old man's eyes were now clear and sharp. The man laughed heartily at Ikedi's wide-eyed stare and revealed that he was no ordinary man, but a spirit ancestor testing his descendants. Since you were honest with me, the old man said, I will grant you seven wishes, one for each day, over the next week. But be warned, you can't wish for more wishes, nor can you wish death upon another. Before Ikedi could respond, the old man vanished, leaving him standing there, stunned. Ikedi ran home as fast as his leg could carry him, bustling through the doors of their little hut, gasping for breath. Mama, who was busy preparing the dinner, looked up in surprise. What is wrong with you, Ikedi? Have you finally gone mad this time around? She asked, hands on her hips. I met an old man, a spirit ancestor. He gave me seven wish. Ikedi blotted out, his voice a mixture of excitement and disbelief. Mma, ever the skeptic, rolled her eyes. Seven wishes. Ikedi, if you have any sense, you would wish for wealth or a bigger house or better still, wish for a big stomach like all the successful men in this village i am tired of looking at that lizard belly of yours 
First, Ike they tried to brush her off, but Mma, relentless as ever, kept pestering and mounting him until he gave in. To get back to her, he angrily said, Okay, then I wish for a big belly. No sooner had the words left his mouth, his flat stomach ballooned out, growing large round like a drum. Both husband and wife stare at the miraculous sight in shock. You foolish woman, you made me waste a wish on this. Ike they cried, clutching his newly expanded belly. So it's true, Ma shouted back, her eyes wide with astonishment. And you big fool, you wish for a big belly instead of something useful, she said as they argued angrily. Their twin sons, Udo and Oka, wandered in from outside. Seeing their father's new absorbed figure, they burst out <laughs> laughing, pointing and mocking him. Papa, what happened to you? Did you swallow our mother's pot? Udo teased why Oka doubled over in laughter. And so, the seven wishes, one is gone, wasted for nothing, more than a belly full of trouble leaving both him and Mma to wonder what the next six days would bring. As the night deepened, Ike lay on the tattered mat, tossing and churning like a restless fish out of the water. His newly acquired pot belly was as comfortable as it was ridiculous. Meanwhile, his wife Mma was pacing around the small mud hut, her mind spinning like a village gossip tongue. She wasn't thinking about the burden her husband carried, but was instead plotting how she could use the remaining six wishes for herself. Yes, in her mind, the wishes were hers, not Ikedis. After she mused, who else but me should decide how to spend these blessings? Ma had always dreamed of having a curvy figure like her sister. Instead, she had a straight plain figure like an abandoned yam stick. Chamaka, on the other hand, was well-shaped, attracting suitors like flies to food. Anuma's frustration boiled over as she envisioned herself with the curves of a goddess. But while she was fantasizing, Mma saw Ike the groaning like a goat in labor, his bloated belly making sleep impossible. Very early the next day, Unable to bear the discomfort any longer. Ike de used his second wish. I wish for this big belly to disappear, he murmured, and instantly his belly shrunk back to his usual pitiful size. Relieved, he sighed. But his relief was short lived when Mama noticed that the belly was no more. She flew into a rage. You useless man, she screamed. You wasted another wish. You empty-headed man, now we have only five left. Her voice was loud. The twins had to rush to their parents' room to find out what was happening. And at that moment, Ma threw a pot at her husband, Ikede. Ikede ducked the pot, but the pot, instead of hitting its target, smashed into Udo's head as the twins walked in. Udo crumbled like a wet rag and fell into a coma. They rushed him to a native doctor, but his efforts were as effective as pouring water on a stone. Udo remained almost lifeless. The next morning, with a heavy heart, Ike used his third wish. I wish for my son to recover. Udo instantly sprang back to life, but Uma was furious. Ike day! You have wasted yet another wish, you goat! Mma fumed. We could have waited for him to recover on his own. But no, you have to play the hero and spend yet another wish. Ikedi was livid. How can you say that? He yelled. Our son was half dead because of your foolishness. And now you are complaining. What do you want from me, this woman? What really do you want exactly? What do you want me to wish for next, Mma? He asked with so much anger, without missing a beat. Mma replied, I want to be the most curvy woman in the whole village of Munede, so all the men will admire me. 
Ikedi looked at his wife with disgust. Vanity upon vanity, he muttered. Tomorrow morning, you wake up with your wish granted so you can finally leave me in peace. Oka, who had been eavesdropping, couldn't stay silent any longer. He stepped out boldly, though only 10 years old, and said, So, Mama, this our poverty doesn't disgust you. Instead of wishing for riches, you want to waste a wish on feminine cups. He asked, looking angry. It's none of your business. And for your information, I have plans for the remaining wishes. First, I will wish for all the gold coins in the world. Then I will wish for Chamaka's death. That foolish sister of mine who mocks me for being flat-chested. And finally, I will wish for long life. Wow, Mama! Oka said, amazed. I thought Papa was the one with the wishes. But it seems you have hijacked them all. Papa, are you going to just sit there like a carved Iroko tree? When will you be a man and make decisions for yourself? Annoyed, Mama knocked her son's head. Shut up and don't talk when elders are speaking. I will talk, Oka retorted. You almost killed my twin brother and now you want to waste the remaining wishes. The two of them backed at each other like quarreling dogs until Ikedi was fed up, shouted in frustration. I wish you two would just shut up. And just like that, Oka's lips and his wife's lips were sealed tight as if glued together. They were rendered completely moot. Ikedi had mistakenly used his wish in anger and now he was filled with regret. The next morning, they were still dumb. Their mouths were still glued together. Realizing his mistake, he sighed heavily. I wish their lips would unseal. He muttered, using up his fifth wish. Instantly, their lips became free and they could speak again. Again, Mama wasted no time. You big-headed fool, she yelled. Do you see what you have done now? We have only two wishes left. Ikedi shook his head in despair. Two wishes left, he echoed. And at this rate, I might not live to see them through, he said with so much sadness in his heart as he walked away. Mama waited till the day was about to break, her heart pounding with determination. She quietly slipped out of the bed and tiptoed to the kitchen where she placed a sharp knife in the burning fire, watching the blade turn red hot. The dim light of the flames flickered ominously on her face, reflecting the wide glint in her eyes. As she noticed her husband staring in his sleep, she crept back to his side, her breath shallow and her grip tight around the heated knife. She held the scorching blade close to his eyes and his. I will burn you with this knife and terminate you if you don't wish for what I want. Ikedi's eyes flew open in terror, his heart racing as he stared at his wife's crazed expression. He stammered, trying to find words, but Uma silenced him with a sharp look. Just make a wish, she demanded. Her voice low and threatening. See, I wish my wife Ma would have the best feminine figure and men would admire her. Shaking with fear, Ike the mother the wish the wife just said, and instantly Ma's figure transformed. Her once plain shape became as curvy and as desirable. Her waist, her hips, full. Ma looked down at herself. A wicked smile spreading across her face as she admired her new body. Now she said, her voice dripping with malice, Make another wish. Wish for my sister's death. Ikedi, though still trembling, managed to keep his voice steady. You have to wait until tomorrow morning. Remember, it is only one wish for a day. And are you so wicked that instead of wishing for money, to save this family from poverty, you are wishing for death. 
Mma glared at him and said, Of course, I wanted money, but it was a fool like you who kept wasting wishes. So I resolved to use the two remaining wishes smartly, one for a fine figure and the other for death of my wicked sister, who was always mocking me because of my flat figure. But with this fine figure of mine, I will dump you and marry a rich man. So you see, I am smarter than you. Ike decided deeply. You fool. You cannot kill anyone with the wishes. You cannot wish for more wishes. That's what the old man told me. It's a lie, Mma snapped. I want my sister dead. Well, you have to wait until tomorrow morning, Ike said calmly. Though in his mind, he had fully resolved to wish for a huge pot of gold, first thing in the morning. Mma stood in front of the mirror, admiring her new figure. Her twin sons walked in and froze, their eyes wide with shock. At their mother's transformed body, they quickly realized what had happened. Dad, we have an idea, Oka said, his voice filled with urgency. You should use your one remaining wish and wish for more wishes. Ikeri smiled. You cannot wish for more wishes, my children, and you cannot wish death on anyone. You lie, Ma shouted from the mirror where she was still admiring her new shape. Tomorrow morning, you will use the last wish and wish for my sister's death. The twin was shocked and exchanged glances. Moving closer to the easy door, they couldn't hold back anymore and began to lambast their mother. Mama, you are so foolish, Oka cried and wasted all the wishes instead of wishing for money. You wish for this nonsense. The other twin added, throwing his hands up in frustration. Mma, oblivious to their words, finished her makeup, smiling at her reflection. She cat walked out of the house, walking into the street to be admired by the village men. Her walk was slow and deliberate, her hips swaying with every step she took. A new curves drawing the attention of every man she passed. Eyes widened, jaws dropped, and whispers filled the air as Uma enjoyed the envious and admiring glances of the villagers. But as she walked down the street, the twins were taking their father to a hidden location to hide him until the next day to prevent Uma from manipulating the last wish. The twins wanted their father to use the last wish and wish for bags of money and gold. But as they walked down the street, Ikedi's eyes fell on his wife, surrounded by men who were looking at his wife lustfully. Anger began to boil within. All the pain of frustration and humiliation he had endured because of her came rushing back. He remembered the wasted wishes, the arguments, the tears. The twins noticed their father's growing agitation and tried to drag him away, but they were too small to move him. Out of sheer frustration and spite, Ikedi shouted, I wish my wife would make a huge fat right now, and as she fat, her old flat figure will return. The words had barely left his mouth when a loud, unladylike fart echoed through the streets. Froze in horror as the sound seemed to rattle off the, word, the walls of the village. The villagers, who had been admiring her just moments ago, burst out into laughter, pointing and jeering to Uma's utter dismay. Her newly acquired curves began to deflate, her body shrinking back to its former flat shape. <laughs> Humiliated, Uma ran home, tears streaming down her face as the mocking laughter followed her. The twins stood in shock, realizing their father had wasted the last wish. Ikedi, now overcome with regret, walked to a lonely bush and sat down there, tears flowing freely. He cried bitterly. 
chastising himself for letting him, his emotions get the better of him. He had misused the last wish and now their chance at a better life was gone. As he wept, the old man who had given him the seven wishes appeared before him. The old man's eyes were filled with wisdom as he spoke. My son, God will bless you in due time. You are a good man, but you need to brave up. Go back home, be strong and handle your family like a man. Your wife has learned her lesson and if you stand your ground as a man, she will start to respect you. Do not give up because honesty always pays. You don't need wishes to be successful in life. All you need is hard work, consistency and tenacity. With those words, the old man disappeared, leaving Ikedi alone with his thoughts. Slowly, he wiped his tears, feeling a new sense of resolve washed over him. He stood up, straightened his shoulders and began the walk back home. He knew that he made mistakes, but he also knew that he could be a better man. He stepped forward, ready to face whatever challenges that laid ahead, resolving to build a better life for his family. Uma was sitting in the corner of their small hut, her face streaked with tears and her pride in chatters. The once small, self-assured woman was now a shadow of herself. Her confidence deflated along with her newly lost coughs. Udo and Oka were unusually quiet, sensing the tension in the air as they glanced nervously between their parents. Ikedi took a deep breath as he entered the hut. He stepped steady, his gaze fixed on his wife. He was no longer the timid, passive man who let life pass him by. Something had shifted in him. A fire ignited by the old man's words. He knew what he needed to do. Uma looked up to her husband, her eyes red and puffy. For the first time in their marriage, Ikedi saw not just anger in her eyes, but vulnerability, a plea for understanding, hidden behind the bitterness. Uma, Ikedi began, his voice calm but firm. This is not how we should live. We have been fighting, wasting our time and hurting each other over things that don't even matter. We were given a gift and instead of using it wisely, we let our desires and anger ruin it for us. Uma sniffed, her eyes dropping to the floor, unable to meet his gaze. I know I have made mistakes. Ikedi continued, but I am done being a man who runs from his problems. I want to change. I want to work hard and give our family a better life. Not through wishes, but through effort and determination. Uma looked up, surprised by his words. This was not the Ikedi she was used to. This was a man with resolve. A man who had finally found his voice. And you, Ikedi said, his tune softening as he reached out to touch her hand. You don't need to compare yourself to others. You don't need to wish for what others have. You are my wife and I love you as you are. But we need to work together, not against each other. Mas tears flowed freely now, not from shame or anger, but from a deep sense of regret and relief. She nodded, her voice trembling as she spoke. I am sorry, Ikede. I was blinded by jealousy and pride. I see now that it is not by having what others have, but by appreciating what we have. Ikede smiled. A warm, genuine smile that hadn't crossed his face in a long time. He pulled Uma into a hug, holding her close, as Udo and Oka watched in awe. Seeing their parents truly connect for the first time 
was amazing. From that day on, Ikedi and Mma walked side by side. Ikedi returned to his farm, putting in long hours and learning new skills to improve their yield. Mma, inspired by her husband's newfound determination, started a small business selling handmade goods at the market. She also focused on raising Udo and Oka with more care and discipline, teaching them the values of honesty and hard work. The village watched in amazement as the family that was once the laughing stock began to thrive. Ikedi's farm flourished with bountiful harvest and Uma's business grew, bringing in more money than they had ever imagined they can. But more than the material success, it was the unity and love in their family that made them truly wealthy. And as for the villagers, they no longer mock Ikedi and his family. Instead, they respected him for his honesty and his hard work and his newfound wealth and his ability to turn his family's life around without the need for magical wishes. The story of Ikedi and Uma became a tale of redemption and the power of determination. A reminder that true success doesn't come from shortcuts, but from preservance and love. In the end, Ikedi realized that the old man's true gift was not the seven wishes. It was the lessons they all learned from it. Sometimes the greatest power lies not in what we wish for, but in what we are willing to work for.